Oh, well. <laughs> that Okay, that sounded on sync for me. Oh, really? Yeah. It was late for me. But my uh, Wi-Fi here is, like, terrible. And we're also five, we're a year in the future right now, too, so makes sense. That's crazy. You're in the future. But, uh, and the present. <laughs> but now, yeah, we're in the future anyway, or I guess in the past. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Luck We Had, a shameless recap podcast. Um, I am one of your hosts, Lena. I, am I don't Evan. usually do this intro. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Whenever Amanda's not here, it's like she's normally just like the, she starts everything. And well, hello, I'm Evan. I'm your other host. And today we're missing one of our buddy. We're missing our buddy. No. Yeah, we were just chatting about recent events. Let's see what happened since the last time we recorded the podcast. Trump um, got arrested today. Yes, I did see that. Today is April 4th. Um, um, but no handcuffs, no mugshot. So what was it all for? <laughs> yeah, what was all the spiel for? I'm here for the drama, but obviously they probably kept it very secret. But... Well, he just like surrendered to, I think he was like, okay, like, I'll go. This shit is going to get him reelected, I swear. Uh, I don't want to deal with that again. If he, go- if he goes to trial and like gets off, people are going to be like, okay, so now we should elect him because he's like president for the people. But- Anyway, um, what else, what else happened? happened? New, new Fall Out Boy album. <laughs> <laughs> Fall Out Boy tour. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, um, I yeah, got to see. I did not get tickets, but I didn't either. Like I, I've never. They were I never really was expensive. Into them, and plus their tickets were so. They were only playing arenas, obviously, and I was like, like I, it's like amphitheaters only. They're playing. They're playing outside concerts, amphitheaters only. I don't want to pay a hundred dollars to be ten thousand yeah. feet away from them. Like, no, thank you. Like. I saw Fall Out Boy in 2014. Was that the Panic I Tour? Think, no, it was, um, they did like a rando Christmas concert in my town. Oh, Slay. And <gasps> the Slay! 1975 opened for them. Oh my god. Yeah. That's really fun. And uh, like our radio station like held like a Christmas concert series or whatever. Nice. But like they didn't perform Christmas songs. It was just like mm-hmm. for the holidays. But was it like when you said like your radio station shows, right? Yeah, but it was it was at like our local like mid sized venue. Like it wasn't it wasn't our stadium mm-hmm. or like our or arena, but it wasn't like any small like bar or anything. But I think my ticket was I was like I was like thirteen. My ticket was um I think it was eighty dollars, but it was resale. Damn, like it wasn't. I didn't get it originally. I don't think. But I think it was $80. And the That's 1975 really opened for them. And it was like right after Chocolate had just come out. Ah, uh, so the crowd, you were in the peak 1975 concert. Dude, half the crowd left after the 1975 set. And we were like, what the fuck are you doing? What? Like, Fall Out Boy's about to come on. <laughs> That's crazy. That's really yeah. crazy. I remember I got to see Panic at the Disco in 2014 at one of the smallest venues in Baltimore. And my ticket was literally like 20 bucks because it was right after, um, is it? too too young to die too weird, too weird to, to live. live too rare to die yeah i saw them out i saw them after that too they were playing like a, a jingle ball later. it was like my local radio stations like because 21 pilots played the next night it was like right before they got big too so it was like the era when they were sm- like it was like that both of those they were on tour for those albums and then got big right after those albums came out so i got to see they all went Pete, on tour together Brendan. right no so for not not the way I saw them. They I don't know if they did or not. They probably could have. But the when I saw them, they were just playing this radio shows. Like it was like four nights, four and like ten different bands. So like three bands each played a night. So like Panic was the headliner for one of the nights, and that's the only show I went to. But the next night it was like Twenty One Pilots was the headliner with like a couple other bands playing before them. But uh, this was yeah. yeah, literally like twenty thirteen or something like that. So I I I. Yeah, Ugh. one of the pilots growing up in Columbus is crazy because oh yeah, aren't they from there? there? Yes, ten minutes away from me. Actually, honestly, like the same area I live in. But um, my friends went to the same church as Tyler, <laughs> and one of my friends met him and said that Tyler was the like most boring person they'd ever talked to. He looks like every interview and every photo I've seen of that man. I'm like, where was the appeal for so long? Well, and my friend is like into music. My friend, my friend is trying to be a conductor professionally. So, <gasps> oh, Simon, I love Simon. It's Simon. Yeah, I love Simon. 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 I don't know if you know this. Me to... and Simon sometimes have a little DMs. I love them. <laughs> Simon loves to chat. Simon's the best. Shout out to Simon. Um, Shout out to Simon. But 
Yeah. And then I saw them after Blurry Face came out. I never and saw them I in saw them. I saw them like right after Trench came out, but I wasn't into them at the time. Mm-hmm. I just like, because we live in Columbus, like a family friend had tickets for free to work or home, something. Hometown shows are always like discounted. Like they always do that. Yeah. So I just like showed up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, these boys can put on a show, I guess. God. Um, well, speaking of concerts and things that have happened recently, I got to see Joy Wave in concert, which Fuck are yeah. the homeboys who their song Tongues play in the beginning of which episode is it? I, it's when Ian steals the baby. 506. 506. 506. And it's, mm-hmm. uh, I found them in. And when I was a freshman in high school, because one Lena told me to watch this stupid show, and I found that song, and I've been obsessed with it for years. And I got to see that live, and I texted them immediately, and I was like, my Ian moment, guys. <laughs> it's a good-ass band. They're up there with, like, AWOL Nation to me. Yeah, like, they're they, really... I feel like they sound very similar. I never, like really like list i never put them on shuffle i have like a handful of songs i listen to them but like damn that concert made me go i should be listening to them more often so let me reevaluate shout out to joy wave they were awesome um but yeah i feel like that sums it up of the the news this week (laughs) and then our derail of oh well barbie movie trailer (gasps) came out today okay obsessed with that Uh, i haven't seen the trailer but i saw all the release of all the actors and uh michael Sarah and dua lipa huge ass cast Michael Sarah is like Ken's gay friend. <laughs> I love that. Ken's Ken's gay lover. And then lover. what's the guy from Sex Education and Doctor Who? He's in it, right? Shuti. He's the new Shuti. doctor, right? What's I'm his right? last name? Gawa. Yeah, he is. I cannot remember his last name, but I know who you're talking about. I he said, plays, "Hey, Dua Lipa." He plays Eric in Sex Education, and then there's yes. also Adam from Sex Education and Maeve. Yeah. And all three of them are in it. And Chris Evans, Chris Evans' brother, Scott. I love Scott. He's so yeah. funny. He's so cute. Scott Evans, Will Ferrell, like this. Oh, I didn't it's see a Will crazy Ferrell's cast in it. That they kept. Kate McKinnon. Yeah, he's in it. Who? Kate, Kate McKinnon. McKinnon. Yeah, this cast. They really like kept it on lockdown. They were like, I'm, we're not telling you. I'm literally <laughs> so excited. Like Barbie is my Joker. I'm so excited for this movie. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks. I the trailer. I will say gave like nothing away about the plot which that's is, awesome i it's like it's like nice but also, i heard the theory is like truman show vibes i think it, i think they go to like quote unquote the real world like oh Barbie and Ken gotcha go and they're to, just like, like reality checked or something like that i guess yeah because will ferrell plays a human okay yeah because i obviously didn't see the trailer yeah, yeah. Well, no, the posters say, and there are a couple others that say, like, oh, this person's, like, a human. Oh, okay. I just this, saw the one that, like, this is Alan. Oh! <laughs> big news, Succession's back. Succession is back. I have not watched the two episodes that have premiered okay. so far. Um, I, I have been texted about it by everyone I know who watches it, so I <laughs> will be watching it tonight. And I, I will text wanna, Lena like, tonight. I don't want to, like, influence your opinion, but I feel like it's kind of a slow start to the season. That, Definitely that the whole series is a slow start and it hurts no, me. No, for real. The, the second episode made some moves or at least offered like background on the characters. I heard you get, there's a lot of Connor sympathy. Yes, because the big thing that's coming up that, I mean, you already know about because you saw the last season is like yeah. he proposed to Willa. So they're yeah. getting married soon. But obviously Willa's like kind of not she's into never it been cause... ever into him <laughs> yeah it's i saw this this interview with um kieran culkin where he had to rate the succession characters from like most evil to least evil and he mm-hmm. put connor at most evil oh he was like he was like connor he was like he was like connor is unpredictable he is not in the business but he has basically used his money and his privilege to build a golden cage for this woman and like trap her in there yeah and say like i can make all your dreams come true and she can't leave because then she won't be supported but he knows that she's not really into it and i was like i was like yeah i like i knew that but i was also like that's a yeah it's a really interesting yeah take. damn yeah. but we should talk because like you have so much like uh we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk we'll talk but oh barry's coming back soon too I'm... are you a barry watcher oh i'm a barry, You're a barry watcher. watcher yeah no, I watched okay, the okay. I watched the trailer when it came out a couple weeks ago. Oh, I'm I'm gonna shed a tear. I'm gonna freak out. There's so much happening. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. You're never gonna well, I don't know if I, I forgot I think I forgot to tell you guys. In 
two weeks, I'm going to the live Sunny podcast show. <gasps> you son and of I'm, a bitch. And, I, and I'm going to throw tomatoes at Rob. <laughs> Good. I won't. Boo. I won't. If security is listening, I'm not going to. But just cut that. Cut that. I should. Cut that. Throw and then he'll just he'll chomp him out of the air with his veneers. Are they coming to England? Yeah, they're going to London. So I'm gonna travel down to London. That's so uh, fucking sick, dude. Literally, actually, it's like no, not this weekend, but like next weekend, the 16th. Damn. 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 Oh, and I played I played Sunny Trivia with some friends. We won, and you won. Of that course, awesome. you did. Yeah, at a pub, a local pub, and we got a 50 pound bar tab. So that that's cool. sick. When I played trivia last, we named our team name Kitten Mittens. <laughs> it was my mom's idea. <laughs> Not Sunny say. related, but we were. Uh, but that's should, so sick. Just to, just to put the feelers out to see if there's anyone in there in the yeah. crowd. Alrighty. But we should probably talk Ready about to bust a move? the show we're here to talk about. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to do like the... Yeah, do you want to do the read through and then I can the do credits. the... credits? Yeah. Okay, cool. So today we're going to talk about episode 509, Carl's First Sentencing. This aired on March 15th, 2015, so we're a little past it now. Yeah. Um, it was written by Eaton Frankel. This is the ninth of 13 Shameless episodes that he wrote. He wrote 107, Frank Gallagher, Loving Husband, Devoted Father, 205, Father's Day, 210, A Great Cause, 307, A Long Way From Home, 312, Survival of the Fittest, 404, Strangers on a Train, 409, The Legend of Bonnie and Carl, 505, Rite of Passage, this episode, 605, Refugees, 610, Paradise Lost, 706, The Defenestration of Frank, and 711, Happily Ever After. God, juicy, so juicy crazy. episodes. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, and then it was directed by Christopher Chulak. Um, this is the third of 11 episodes of Shameless that he's directed. He did 410, Liver I Hardly Know Her, 501, Milk of the Gods, this episode, 512, Love Songs in the Key of Gallagher, 601, I Only Miss Her When I'm Breathing, 604, Going Once, Going Twice, 612, Familia Super Gallagorius Omnia, <laughs> Six, 701, Hyreth, 705, Own Your Shit, 709, Aroboros, and 1112, Father Frank Full of Grace. Um, so mostly, mostly the back end of the series. I cannot yeah. believe he did the finale, yeah, and not John Wells. I know he still. disappeared. There was some serious beef there. <laughs> disappeared for three seasons to come back to direct the last episode of the series. I mean, it seems like he was a great director. I just, I cannot believe John Wells did not step in to do the finale. Dude. Like, and I remember the, the all video the shit that they were getting, of, like, the video that leaked of them after rap saying like. Where's John? Like, oh, someone yeah. look at John Wells. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that was Noel saying that. What a little shit. They're like, where's John? Um, <laughs> fucking dumbass. He, yeah. He also did a lot. He was like, I'm not going to be employed by this man again. Mm. Um, He also did a lot of ER and SEAL Team in Animal Kingdom. He's very busy. So yes, I know yes, uh, yes. Amanda did these notes. Yes, she did. By the way, so I'm sure her thoughts are in there. <laughs> um. The synopsis here is Frank has a checkup with his doctor who seems to be losing it. Fiona prepares Carl for his sentencing hearing. Lip sleeps with the professor. Ian wants to get back on his meds and Kev enjoys campus life. Uh, this is a great episode. I'm very excited. Yeah. And I'm going to hand it over to Evan. Alrighty. Um, so the previously on, uh, previously, why am I already stuttering? I can't do this ever. <laughs> <laughs> the previously was done by Ian in the diner, and he's just like coked out sitting at the booth. He's like, I'm heavily sedated, and even I know what happened last week on Shameless. Where the hell have you been? Um, I previously- love that they put this intro in because the scene that it's from is like way later <laughs> mm-hmm. in the season. They yeah. were like, while we're here, let's just throw a bumper in there. Yeah, let's just like bulk record a bunch of ones and throw the ones in that we didn't do yet. Um, previously on Shameless, uh, Carl strapped Jugs onto Chucky, and they both got arrested. Um, Kevin V are separating. Um, Lip is underwater in tuition and has started selling weed on campus with Kevin to make up, make it. Um, way back in the beginning of the se- season, uh, Fiona and Sean tried to be together. Uh, Sammy shot Frank. Ian was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but he's not complying with his pills, and he doesn't want to acknowledge his diagnosis. Opening credits. It is hilarious. Hilarious about Fiona and Sean. I was like, damn, wait, that was this season. I know. <laughs> they were like, got married. Yep. They were like, hey, if you guys right forgot. After, married and divorced <laughs> to someone 
Else. Dude, she relationship hopper. I need her so bad. <laughs> I love her. Um, all right, opening credits. Uh, we open on Fiona getting dressed up for court and taking off her wedding ring. Um, Sammy is still in the house for some goddamn reason and keeps trying to convince Fiona that Gus is sleeping around on tour. Um, and Fiona says, get the fuck out of my house, bitch. Because why is she still posted up there, literally? No, for real. Well, I guess she's got nowhere else to go, but it's like, no one wants you here, girl. No one acknowledges you. Your son's not even here. Fuck off. (laughs) Um, She slams the bathroom door, which wakes Ian up, who's having a hallucination about the MPs coming after him. He's, like, immediately, like, it. I guess what, he thinks it's, like, a gunshot or something that, like, startles him awake that's at the door? Um... No, I think it's just the door slamming, and just, he like, thinks jolts the MPs him awake. Ha- he th- he thinks the MPs have busted in. Ah, uh, is is or or it's a car door or something like. But yeah, if I mean, yeah. So then yeah. he <laughs> gets up and like runs downstairs. So then Mickey wakes up immediately and chases him downstairs. He's like, where the um, fuck are you going? <laughs> and as that's happening, Ian grabs the family bat on the stairs. And right when Debbie's coming downstairs from the bathroom, he swings it, literally nearly missing her. And like everyone just like goes like still. It's like, oh. Um, and then Mickey takes it the is bat. Shocking. Yeah. Mickey takes the bat for him and shows Ian that there's no one outside the house. He, like, brings him to the front door. And he's like, no one's coming for you. You're good. And then they have, Really like... interesting, like, intricate performance here. Mm-hmm. Because, like, as soon as Ian swings the bat and almost hits Debbie, he, like, he pauses and in, sh- in shock and starts, like, looking down. He's, like, lowering the bat. So you think he's, like, realizing that there's no one there. But... Actually, but like when Mickey opens the door to show him, he like flinches. Yeah, he still flinches. He like he still thinks that there's people out there. So uh, yeah, I just I always notice that, and he looks fucking devastated. Dude, he like he is like manic, and then all of a sudden he looks like a child. Like he's just like so like just like curls in on himself. Um. So then, well, Mickey, yeah, he's just so scared. Mickey in full husband mood says that they need to get to. Uh, get Ian to a clinic right now and get him some fucking meds today. Um, and then immediately right over to uh, oh sorry, Amanda. I thought it was I saw Amanda. And I thought it was, was Amanda. Like, Amanda. <laughs> sorry, Amanda. <laughs> nope. Amanda could write a book about how much Mickey's softness when he's taking care of Ian means to her. Of course, you wrote and a she whole basically dis- did. You she did, wrote that girl. dissertation. <laughs> uh, dissertation link on our website um that's true over at college uh kev has been out all night partying with the college girls and he has become the rape walker uh meaning a man who escorts wasted women home so they don't get assaulted not what you would think what that word would sound like (laughs) but most of these women hit him up to have sex with him yes um (laughs) <laughs> Actually, Steve Howie like was at the Country Music Awards the other night, and one of my mutuals on Twitter was tweeting about it because she was like, "He look, he looks too damn good right now. <laughs> He's a handsome fella. He's been looking He's good a lately. real handsome. What was fella. with his like? What was with his like bald era? Did he just get hair plugs or something? Because he's got a full head of hair now. I don't so know. I'm like, it was like a. Sh- I thought I thought he said that he had like alopecia or something. Oh my god, I didn't. see Am that. I making that up? Like, did I did I misremember that? I don't that know be because true, like but... it wasn't even like buzzed. It was like shiny bald head too. It he was very bald, and I feel like but he, he still made grew some... a beard. Yeah, if you have, if you have but... alopecia, it doesn't just affect your. No, I know. Head. I don't know. Maybe he had like maybe he only had like partial alopecia. He was probably going through treatment to get like fucking hair plugs they might be right something like that but i know i think i think he he said something about he had like he has like partial alopecia or something huh. so i'm sure he could get hair plugs or something but i'll have to i'll have to fact check that give <laughs> well, me like one learn- second you can keep reading on keep reading on <laughs> <laughs> you learn something new um in the t- interrogation room uh so we're over at the juvie police station um fiona and carl are meeting with carl's lawyer who is trying to convince carl to roll over uh, on his drug dealer uh, to roll over on his drug dealer's bosses for a later sentence like basically like rat them out and his school of record his school record of violence is reflecting badly on him and he doesn't want to show remorse in the courtroom because he could get a year of prison so of course he's like big bad carl and he doesn't want to plead guilty or take any easy way out because he's a fucking hardhead um and he yeah, won't he won't show any remorse because he has no remorse um 
And he says that uh, his lawyer says that the dealer is pissed about losing all the drugs and money. So there's no guarantee that Carl would be safe in prison. So regardless if he's pleads guilty or not, he's probably not safe in prison because his buddy got all those people backing him up in jail. Yeah. So like the lawyer saying his only way out would just be like to, yeah, to roll on everybody. But yeah. okay. Did some Steve Howard research. Let's he hear does it. have alopecia. <gasps> oh my God. Um, But. So, like, alopecia can be stress-induced. I'm, like, it's unclear what kind he has. Shameless gave Um, him alopecia. But, yeah, it can can be stress-induced, so it can, like, appear and disappear. So, either he he only had partial alopecia and got, like, hair plugs, or, I don't know, he, yeah, whatever. Sorry sorry to Steve Howie for (laughs) false information. I I found this other article uh called on this like gay news website called steve howie the straight actor who came out as gay and what? basically what it's about is like steve howie's played quite a few gay roles i think and he is they they wrote specifically about his role in game over man which is hilarious because that movie <laughs> yeah that movie of all movies that movie. to be credible <laughs> I mean, he was definitely very gay. Yeah, I've never seen movie. it, so I can't vouch for his gayness in the movie, but I know you can. There is a sex scene. There is a sex mm. scene. Um, and then he's the villain, and then he's like a human weapon, question mark? His dead body becomes a weapon. That movie's crazy. Um, wow, okay. <laughs> but he basically was like, he basically was like, I play gay because I want everybody to know that, like, it's like not like a bat like it's like they can be like hyper masculine like this is so silly anyway was let's he interviewed on, for it yeah he talked all about this movie game over man i'm like fucking game over man is nothing you are, <laughs> you are nothing well because he's like he's like i'm this like hyper masculine like hitman guy and uh, like one of my boys who's a, also a hitman like because they're in this like crew like mm-hmm. basically diehard-esque like terrorist crew or whatever gotcha and then the reveal is that like while they're hunting the three main characters mm-hmm. they like think one of them is dead and they like pause to have a quickie <laughs> <laughs> and then they get attacked by the other two while they're fucking <laughs> that's so funny in bed it was crazy All but right. yeah anyway, <laughs> let's move <Over>. on <laughs> Uh, still in, like, the, like, holding area, we're into the other room, uh, Chucky's IQ test has come back, and it's a 71. It's so low that the judge might take pity on him and reduce his sentence. Isn't he legally, like, mentally disabled? Yeah, I think that's what they say. Don't they say that? And, like, Sammy's like, you hear that? Great news! (laughs) Um... Sammy is pissed that it doesn't guarantee Chucky will walk, but it's looking like no matter what, he's going to get time. Even if, like, he has a low IQ, even if he does, like, plead guilty, he's still going to go to jail regardless because they had so much drugs. So many drugs. I know, but I don't understand that for Chucky because it's, like, for for Chucky. For Carl, I get it because he definitely has priors and stuff. But Chucky, I'm, like, if he has a super low IQ and this is his first defense, like, ever, I'm, like... I feel Obviously, like, this kid was manipulated into yeah. this. I think they should just throw the book at Carl. I think what would make sense for the legal system yeah. is to throw the book at Carl harder. Mm-hmm. But the legal system is sick and twisted, and they get more money if they book two people instead of one, probably. True. Plus, how are they going to write off Chucky Cause like, without he, sending him to jail? Because, like, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, Although I, they do bring him back later. Yeah, he does get let out, obviously. Um, So then... Sammy, being the wonderful, wonderful mother she is, says that Chucky needs to make some friends in prison so they would protect him. She blatantly says he should jerk off the guards to protect him. And she, like, spells it out, too. She was like, so that means take the guards. And, oh, my God, I hate this scene. I don't like it. She does something so much worse right right after. (laughs) Yep. Um, so back to college, uh, Lip is late to his third class of his semester with hottie hottie milf professor. Thank you, Amanda, putting it in bold. <laughs> uh, she wow. is mean and harsh as a teacher and she is built to be called mommy. Amanda, you're she so really funny. Is. No, she literally, I looked at her and I said, oh, I'm, I'm looking respectfully. Like, <laughs> 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 um, she is played by Sasa Alexander, who is, uh, biggest role has been, uh, Maura Ilse, how do you pronounce that last name? Isles, Isles, Rizzoli and Isles. Uh, Isles, pronounced Isles, oh, I didn't even read the head, um, in 
Rizzoli, the TV series. I've never seen that show. Have you seen it? It's a, I think it's like a female buddy, like it's either like buddy cop or buddy detective thing. And gotcha. And like women. And, gotcha. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Pretty sure. <laughs> so he shows up and she has no idea who he is, but she tells Lip to sit and listen and come to her office later to discuss him staying in his class because he wasn't on her like registry when he walked in. Well, if because of his tuition, but also usually in university, if you don't show up to the first like two classes, then they automatically kind of like cut you from the class. Gotcha. Unless you contact them ahead of time saying like special exemption or I'm like sick or something. Mm, I love college lore. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, we go over to Fiona. Uh, Fiona gets to work late and Sean asks how Carl is and she bitches about him not listening to her and showing any remorse. Um, Sean tries to offer help, but she won't listen, and he finds that charming. Shut up. I hate them. And he loves it. He, they're flirting. Ugh. Ugh. So, she's so real, though. I know. Sean being like, well, this and this and this, and she's like, fuck off. Can you just let me be, like, upset for a moment, please? Like, stop trying to help, please. Uh, Frank is over at the hospital having a follow-up appointment about his wound on his arm, and he tries to scam up some pain meds, and, but, like, honestly, understandable, that arm is oozing and yellow, and it looks, it is not doing good. Are you, like, but then, I'm curious, like, with, like, infection, I mean, I know you take, like, antibiotics or whatever, but, like, are you not supposed to take, like, opiates because... I don't think because it's like a blood or something like I don't know. I don't know because if it's just like a like a like it's not a surface wound, but it's like not like he broke his leg type of deal. So I'm like, I don't think they would really give you pain meds for something like that unless it was like Like I'm like your arm was hacked off like it was like a bullet graze. Well, I guess like what I'm wondering is like, is it just that they won't give him pain meds because they're like. Your this Frank. is like dumb and doesn't matter <laughs> not not just because like the wound doesn't require it or because mm-hmm. the wound like it will do him worse yeah do you know what i mean yeah 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 um if he takes it with that like injury but also none of this matters <laughs> yep none of it does um his doctor takes one look at it and gets a very weird look on her face and walks out of the room um and he immediately follows after her and she tells him that she has three uh, stage three pancreatic cancer and she found out 10 minutes ago and why did you come in to work after that like was she on shift and they said oh by the way your lab results came in let me tell you or like dude she was probably in shock or something she was probably just like okay yeah. like because she All like right. she looks pale as a ghost like she looks like she's in shock right now um, but i guess like they didn't keep her to like talk about treatment options or anything yeah t- she I'm found out 10 she just minutes ago out based on what she says later yeah yeah um she tells frank that she needs a drink and frank says that he knows just the place um and she went with that old ass weird man yeah she like lo- just up to uh, left work too like she was like you want to go get a drink with me and, and he, he said, was like, I'm old, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm old, but I keep it tight for a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of doctors, um, Mickey got Ian to the, go to the clinic. Uh, the doctor is there setting him up with meds, and Mickey is finding out the schedule for them so he can keep Ian on track of when he needs to take everything. Um, when the doctor says words like try and experiment, uh, experimentation, Mickey tells her he's not a fucking lab rat. And he gets, like, so, like, what, what are you doing? What, what are you talking about? Yeah. He just doesn't know because it's, like, that is very real for yeah. those types of mental illnesses. You kind of just have to, like, try it out and see mm-hmm. what happens. Um, Ian reaches over and pats Mickey's knee and they have a little eye contact moment where it seems to be, like, comforting uh for each other and again amanda could write books as she said (laughs) um the doctor says he should make a list of people uh to call if he thinks he might hurt himself and mickey immediately is just like like a suicide list and ian uh the meds are supposed to help why would i need a suicide list and of course mickey being like he don't he's got me uh mickey you're so right but not you're not always so wrong well because it's like because it's like (laughs) Sometimes these meds make you want to kill yourself. Sometimes the meds will do that. <laughs> like it's unpredictable, and like she's telling you flatly right there, like it's unpredictable. Like it's not about you, girl. 
And once it's again, about you. books, people, books, as Amanda has said. Um, Ian asks how long he needs to take the meds for, and the doctor says there's some evidence that uh, the need for aggressive treatment dismisses, and he asks her how much time, and she says 30, 40 years? And then <laughs> another Amanda note. Yes, Amanda has written fan fiction about the deleted scene in this episode of Mickey and Ian standing outside the clinic. And yes, it is called 30 to 40 years. What a deleted scene that we still don't know what happened in it. Um, There's a whole there, there was one. There's a whole Volt Agalovich we will never, ever get to see. And that makes yeah. my bones shake. They had to like wrestle that answer out of her too. They were like, they were like, how long? And she was like, hard to say. And they were like, ballpark it. She was like, mm, 30 to 40 years. <laughs> I know she... 30 to 40 years. 30 to 40 years. Because, like, obviously they're already being very aggressive with everything she has already said to her. So she knows that that answer is not going to be an answer they want to hear. I'm pretty sure she's, like, she's not, like, the free clinic nurse. Because that's... I don't think this is, like, the free clinic. But it's, like... I think it's, like, a psychiatric, uh, like, doctor, I think. I think... Is it the same doctor from when he was admitted? No, it is it is definitely like kind of like a Medicaid like local place. So if I was her, I would be fucking easy. I would be like, no, I don't care. Go away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Get out. I'm done with you. You're pissing me off. Like, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> um, Over to the alibi. Uh, Frank and the doctor roll into an uh, empty room and Frank tries to get V to comp her drinks. And she says, uh, go fuck yourself, Frank, because they're like the only people in there. And she's like, why would I give you free drinks? Um, Frank and the doctor talk about her cancer and of all the times he has almost died. Um, she starts to say that she feels like she wasted her life with school and work to only probably just die at a very young age. Cause she's, I don't know, we know her age, but has they told us she's like, what, 30? She's probably around 30 if she's completed her residency and everything. Gotcha. Um, can you read this next line? I do not know what that is. Oh, yeah. He gets very carpe diem, like, sees the day um, on her, and she's like, where were you with all that crap when I was in my 20s? And she's, like, <laughs> joking, but he's, like, serious, and he's, like, um, mostly in this bar seat. <laughs> <laughs> that part, what is, um, I always pull out my dumb card, what's carpe diem? Carpe diem, it literally means, like, sees the day, like, ah. it, YOLO, YOLO! YOLO! Yeah, say YOLO! <laughs> he gets all YOLO on her. <laughs> <laughs> um... He says that he lived his life to the fullest and wouldn't trade any day of it. Even though he's a piece of shit, Homeboy has lived such a life, so I don't blame him. He's done so much. I wish I had his right? life, but not all the bad parts of his life. He's had a lot of fun. He's also had a lot of struggle. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I want the most fun of traveling. the struggle he gets he went himself to Canada, into. He went to Mexico. Um, he was silly with it. Uh, she says she regrets never getting wasted and making a mistake, and you immediately can see the light bulb go off in Frank's head. Disgusting! Well, he's like, that's my talent. Like, I know, he's like, Getting hey drunk guys. and doing crazy shit? Like, did I tell you about the car that I bought and then destroyed? <laughs> um, over back at college, Lip is going to visit the hot professor who is calling his bullshit saying she knows he hasn't paid the rest of his tuition because she's like says she's friends with the guy who like is the what's it called like the I, payment the plan man or, or whatever the hell yeah the the admissions office yeah. guy whatever financial um, aid office yeah so she's like buddies with him so she's like i know you haven't paid the rest of your tuition um she says it's a shame that he's leaving school because he's a smart one um he goes smart smart or asshole smart and then she goes both close the door on your way out and then she like turns away from him like it's like start like looking at her desk but then lip he closes the door but doesn't leave um he asks her why did she call the finance aid and take such in such an interest she claims it was her job, but the way she's crossing her legs says something else. Um, and then, like, you just see, like, a look over both of their faces, and Lip just, like, agrees. Um, oh, oh, Lip, Lip agrees with me. Lip, like agrees with me. <laughs> Lip agrees she's with me because he hell. drops his bag. Sorry, Amanda. Her notes get me so, like, flustered because I'm like, is that you? Right, I'm, like, I'm like, is it I'm you like, or the I character? Wish, <laughs> I wish I was him so bad right now. It's not um, even funny. <laughs> he drops his bags. Um, then she goes, I don't know what you think you're doing, but there's a policy against fraternizing with your professors. He, oh, I don't want to fraternize. I want to fuck you. Boy! And guess what? He drops to his knees and he 
does. Lip Gallagher eats pussy, and I respect the hell out of that. That is one quote. Another quote by Amanda herself. Um, but then immediately the shot it changes immediately, and then we're He's over. He's crazy. Damn. Yeah. Honestly, he knows how to treat a why? woman. I know she was like trying to get him in bed, but it's also like, why does she have a problem if he hasn't paid the rest of his tuition? It's yeah. like he's paid part of it, and it's not like at this point because she's just lecturing. It's not creating any extra work for her to like also teach to him in the class. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like all he has to do is sit there. I mean, when it comes like to grading and stuff, that's a different story. But still i don't know yeah because they start off just like not knowing each other she's like oh who is this man and like instead of calling like who is the sexy any... beautiful gorgeous man yeah like and like <laughs> she calls financing of all places to like get details on this kid like i don't know it's weird um but anyways scene is cut way too soon um and we're over <laughs> we're um we're back with sammy and carl um she and she's sitting across from him. i don't know how she got time to talk to him but so she's sitting across from him in one of the like holding co- uh conference rooms and she says that uh she heard his plans on setting chucky on fire basically throwing him under the bus and she says that he will not touch chucky but carl's not afraid of that woman no one's afraid of that woman so she like homegirl launches across the table and just like starts clawing at his eyes it's and hilarious it's so doesn't funny. he say something to her like eat me or something yeah he's like eat me bitch and then she starts and then he's like starts pushing him and he'll like, bring it bitch bring it bitch i yeah. remember bring it bitch and then she <laughs> jumps over the table she's fucking lunges over at him <laughs> and then cut to fiona on the phone with lip trying to find uh respectable clothing for carl's hearing um and then aren't they like digging in the attic or something like that yeah fiona's up in the attic and, and v is like on the bottom I... of the stairs or something and she's throwing yeah. bags down to her um then, yeah 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 but she's like she's on the phone with lib and she, they're, they're talking yeah mm-hmm. um and then they talk about uh ian and like brings up fiona getting him a job at the diner something consistent for him which would might be a good idea um fiona goes what about school you learn anything and lip with the <laughs> amanda you're so you're so silly lip with the hot professor <laughs> taste still in his mouth yeah something you're so silly <laughs> um hey <laughs> back over at uh with frank uh frank is taking his new doctor friend to buy some drugs with him because i think they talked about her never really doing anything um she's very very cute and nervous and this storyline makes no sense and is a waste of time but at least it's kind of fun which is so true because i love her it is true i love bianca so much but it honestly just gave frank something to do didn't really do it anything is a waste for of time, his character but like if this wasn't happening what, would what else be doing instead? he'd be drunk i guess they would he'd just have to drugs. i guess they would just have to make something up for debbie or something yeah because she's you not know, really in like, this episode that much like everybody else's storylines are moving at what i feel like is an appropriate pace for where they end up at the end of the season debbie's um doing some moves right now yeah she's at the gym <laughs> she's at the gym showing some moves <laughs> she's lifting <laughs> <laughs> um Kev wakes up uh, in the dorms to a girl calling him for his rape walker services, and he truly hates that name, but he does enjoy helping the girls. Because, like, he seems like he's having a fun time. Like, he's just doing his thing. Um, Lip get back gets back to his room where his resident, Robbie from Victorious. Um, Robbie! <laughs> Robbie! Isn't, I heard there's some tea that was going on with his, like, that actor. With, like, the whole, um the dance parties he would do it was like so the t is i did not hear about this the only thing i know is like what's his name matt shapiro matt bennett matt bennett (laughs) robbie robbie shapiro Shapiro. Robbie Robbie (laughs) um okay i just remember he was in like stanford prison experiment around this time too with every single white boy ever oh yes 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 um but the t is with that so you know how he was doing the basically like nickelodeon victorious whatever like i have a dance party cashing the check yeah yeah so originally it was started by this one dj kind of like uh like event person who like does a bunch of theme things like that it was started by this one guy i'm so sorry i cannot remember his name for the life of me um but so this was originally his thing he has been doing these like i have a party like i parties or whatever um for about party with victorious yeah like he i think his was just i party and then when 
uh, Matt. Oh, because that's like an iCarly thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he started doing those and he had been doing those for at least four years or so, like at least a couple years. And then I, Matt approached him with like, hey, like, would you want to like partner up and start doing uh, like I'll like host with you as well and we can get more traction. And the guy was like, for sure. Yeah. So then they started, they did that whole tour last year where they basically the entire year, 2022, they like toured all across America and did a bunch of I party with Victorious's and the guy hosted it. And then Matt Bennett was like the like host, like the, the it was the guy's event and Matt was hosting. So like it was still right, like the guy's he wasn't, name. He wasn't like the DJ. Yeah, yeah. Like it was still. Or maybe he did like a set, but he wasn't the main. Yeah. So like it was still his event but matt was they were co-doing it now the t is is that they had some uh disagreements towards the end of the tour last year and then matt didn't renew their little thing together and then a couple months later matt bennett is now hosting his own like i party tours his victorious and his thing. victorious thing alone without that guy's association the guy's like so you blatantly stole my entire idea didn't rebook with me because you didn't like that it was it was still my event and you were taking like all the credit for it and so that's a tea on him he just yeah. basically stole that entire themed event and like it got more popular because obviously his face was on it but it wasn't his to begin with i think victorious has like had its time anyway <laughs> like like I, who's watching like, the new care? iCarly series? Like, fuck off! No, I'm like sorry. No, but, like, what? plus like after after Jeanette McCurdy's book, I don't. I think it just kind of leaves a bad taste in. People's I'm mouth over a Nickelodeon. Bit. The only Nickelodeon show I will still like be OG fan. <laughs> Big Time Rush, <laughs> SpongeBob, <laughs> SpongeBob, SpongeBob, and Big Time any, Rush. Any animation, and then like Big Time Rush. Well, but I don't really love what Big Time Rush is doing now. No, they're so, annoying. Like, their their music <laughs> that they're putting out just isn't for me. Um, and they made it that Spanish song just to just cause made me feel really weird. I don't know that if that was the only kind one. of silly. Well, because Carlos is I know, but Latino. Does but he do that was any, kind of does silly. Does he like ever do anything? That for... by, yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was because it was like in collaboration with this like Spanish DJ. But I don't know. I think they were honestly just trying to make a trend because they had a whole dance that went along with it. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, the music know. video had this, like, whole dance. As much as I love all the nostalgia of everything, like, coming back recently, they are just ringing oh, it. My They're God. ringing it too much now, dude. Like, where are the original ideas? They they announced a Harry Potter reboot today. Another one. What does that mean? What does With that HBO. mean? With HBO. Like, what does that all mean? Of, basically, all of HBO's original programming is ending this year, too. Like... Cause, like, Succession Barry's, is ending. Barry's ending. Succession and Barry are both ending. I mean, they still have like hacks in industry, but I'm excited because Last of Us is renewed for at least two more seasons for sure. Oh, that's good. Because they but, um yeah. uh not Neil, the other showrunner of Last of Us, he said that part two is definitely going to be more than one season. So that confirms. Oh, okay. Well, because I was, I was wondering because I was like, they never made like, like they made a third game, but I think it was a prequel. Yeah. So or the maybe third just a game of the first one. So I was like, um, the third game what are they is um, do? the DLC from the episode when it's uh, Ellie and her buddy in the mall. That's the DLC. That was that episode. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, yeah. So part two compared to so the first game's gameplay is about. 15 hours if you don't do extra stuff like no looting no extra side gameplay and fucking around um the second game is 30 hours long my god <laughs> it's more than it's like twice the amount of times and so it makes sense why they're gonna have to break it up because if they're doing nine episodes per season there's no way they can do that entire series if i even felt this yeah. season i even thought the first season was rushed not gonna lie um i've heard i heard that well were, were they 30 minute episodes or hour long episodes every episode was a different time length but they all were over the they were all over 45 minutes but every okay. episode was a different was time. a little different so like the the third episode with like the um like the, the flashback or the the, the and frank uh, frank, and frank and bill frank and bill the frank and bill episode is like an hour and a half long the first episode is like an yeah. hour and a half long and then there's like a 50 minute episode and then a 45 minute episode like they're everything's different i think people are gonna struggle <sighs> watching season two because there's no pedro pascal 
I know. <gasps> spoiler Which alert. Is unfair. Spoiler alert. Spoiler. Sorry, alert. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> I, I totally th- was thinking about saying it first, but um, which is totally unfair. Respect, but to it's such a good. F- Ellie, I'm watching, what's their name? Uh, or whoever plays Ellie Bella, what's their Bella name? Bella Ramsey. Bella Ramsey, which is totally unfair. I love them. They're a very great. I love actor, them. So, but no, I agree. I think it's gonna suck because people have already had such a hard time with. Bella Ramsey, like not myself, obviously, but the worst people in the world have had a problem with her. And then for the second game, spoiler alert for The Last of Us Part 2, anyone listening, for the second part of the game, you watch Joel fucking die by a woman killing him. So then, one, you're going to have people fucking hating Abby because a lot of the game is from her point of view sometimes, too. Um, So you have that as a worst character, and then you have a lot of people who only watch the show for Pedro who are going to leave, and then you have all the people who are anti-Bella Ramsey who are not going to want to watch the show because she's going to be the ma- – like, she is – because obviously people need to realize The Last of Us is about Ellie. It's not about fucking Joel. It's about Ellie. It's not – yeah, it's not about Joel. It's and hilarious. So, uh, Pedro, Pedro Pascal blew up too quick. He's like yeah. Nick Braun. I'm like – He's going to die off and people. I'm sad. <laughs> Well, I'm just like you've he's going to burn out or something. Like I'm just like you have too many people on your side right now to the point where people are going to get a little tired of you. I know my friends at work and today said they were like you don't deserve that. I know my friends at work they were like why is everything made about Pedro Pascal? And I was like he does he's not choosing that. It's everyone else. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, internet's daddy blah blah blah. He's gay. <laughs> yeah. Not confirmed. Not confirmed. Not confirmed I'm but, speculating. Um but his date to the red carpet for the last 3 years says otherwise. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. Him, like it's that guy or his sister or his dates to shows or to red carpets yeah. but i love it and we love that our fruity king and his lesbian best friend sarah polson real should we get back to shameless yeah <laughs> probably sorry amanda uh <laughs> you can keep all this in though this is this is hot content juicy um <laughs> so back over to robbie rotten um, he's here to complain to lip about someone stealing his weed um initially lip is like the fuck? Lock your doors next time, dude. Like, you're in a college, but then he ends up agreeing to go talk to the guy, which I don't know why he's doing. Um, hop over that to is Sean. How I feel. That is how I feel being here, because people in my dorm sometimes will not lock their door. Oh. Like, you need, a, you need a key card to get in, but then yeah. each room, you, like, lock with a, an actual key. And people don't do it, but then they like to prank each other by going in and, like, trashing each other's rooms. I would be pissed and off. And like, well, and then they're like, well, because they're all really close. But then they're like, what the fuck? Like, my mattress got flipped over. Like, I wanted, like, I didn't want to reset it before I went to bed. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, just lock your door. <laughs> like, just lock your door. Yeah, it's just not that hard. Lock your door, please. Alrighty. Uh, back at work, Sean has just found out his kid is going, is moving to Pittsburgh. So now he has to move to Pittsburgh. He's like, I just found out. Uh, what I don't remember what his wife's name is, or his ex-wife's name is. He's like, they're moving to Pittsburgh. And then I guess she's like, Fiona's like, what are you going to do? And he goes, I guess I'm moving to Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. What's his son's name again? Why do I feel like God. it's like Noah or something? It's not Noah. It's not Noah, but it he looks like a Noah. <laughs> I remember on. what he looks like. That's not what I'm looking up. It gave me the actor's name. Will. 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 See, that's why maybe I thought Noah. <laughs> maybe that's why I thought Noah. Um, like, he just, he looks like a Noah to me. Uh, but Fiona had asked him if Ian can work, uh, but he does still agree to hire Ian on as a dishwasher, which is like, woo, Ian consistency. Um, Fiona asks if he's actually leaving, but Sean dodges the question because he probably doesn't even know if he's leaving or not. Because And then we find out if he can. Um, Frank and his doctor friend are by the lake smoking weed. Oh, we totally didn't even talk about the cute part when they're buying weed when she's like, I'm the police. Give me your money. Oh, she is so funny. (laughs) She's so cute. She is so funny. This scene, I really do love this scene. It is one of those where I'm like, God, like. Dude, Frank and his philosophical moments, dude, hit hard. Frank had a serious zest for life. Yeah. And I love him for it as much as he is a shitty entity. As much um, as he is a shithead, he is based off of a British. He is he is a British adaptation. Like yep. it's very, I feel like it's very true to life. <laughs> nope. uh, Frank and Hit Bianca are uh, by the lake smoking weed, and he told her he brought her here, brought her to the spot because it's the best place to shout at God. She admits that she's never really lost her com- uh, her temper and let her emotions out before. Again, total waste of time, but it's very sweet and charming. Like 
Even I, though a lot I of... I do like that he took her back there. Yeah. Because, like, that's where he went at the end of season four. Oh, uh, with the where liver. he was like, I lived, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with Carl. That's a really sweet moment. Um, Like, it sucks that, like, this is such a waste of time, but you we get a lot, a lot of good Frank scenes with Bianca, which I really enjoy. Yeah, because as quickly as their storyline is over together, you do build a nice rapport with them. Yeah, I no, think. it, like, when it was over, it actually, like hurt it, it did it hurt yeah it <laughs> i was like damn <laughs> like i like i didn't i wasn't like i was rooting for them to be together yeah, forever. Absolutely it, it was not. more just that i felt sad for bianca i never even enjoyed them as a couple i just enjoyed no i just enjoyed watching their time i just together. enjoyed bianca yeah, yeah i enjoyed bianca um but uh a, after that it's a quick cut over to kev getting another rape walker phone call um and then back to lip outside talking to the kid uh style the weed uh, oh who's style who's ah, i'm so stupid um back to lip outside talking to the kid who stole the weed uh a kid who was smoking the exact weed that he stole in the open um he actually does a pretty good job at setting the kid straight up while also asking if he would be able to hack a financial aid to help him uh make his account look paid it's so funny because he's like all right don't fucking do that by the way do you know how to do this? It's so well, just he's like, like, he's boom, like, boom, boom, I'm out of smart people school. I think like one out of every three people he asked would probably be like, yeah. Because like, it's like a for tech sure. school, right? In my sleep. Yeah. They're a, yeah, it's a, it's a fake college, but it's Chica- a tech school. Chicago, no, it's just a tech school. Chicago Polytechnic is technically what it's called. It's, it's a fake school. Yeah. But they mostly do like engineering and comp sci stuff. Because he's there. Is he there on robotics? I always forget what his actual major robotics, is. Robotics, yeah. Because he, that's what he tells Amanda's dad that he wants to do. Um, then the kid, this kid is so smart that he got into Stanford, but then he says he didn't want to go to Stanford. Lip says that they, he can't use his computer for the hack because it's school property and this kid doesn't own his own computer. And he was like, you don't have a computer and you're a computer science major? And he's like, and you're a robotics engineer and you don't own a fucking robot? It's a good, I like that. <laughs> it's a good point, but it's also like, you could probably just get a computer through the school. Yeah, I feel like if you're already pay- if you're already at such a bougie ass school that is doing that, they bet I bet like I got a Chromebook you in high just, school. You like, just come apply. On. Yeah, just apply for it. Well, like you could just there I, there's it. somewhere that you have to be able to apply. Yeah. Um, over into another dorm, Kev has arrived to esca- escort a girl home, but she opens the door. Opens the door. Obviously not drunk, and she's already home. And she didn't call him to walk her home. She called him to walk him into her home. Uh, she called him. Hey, the, hey. <laughs> uh, she called him the fuck, and he says, "All right." Like she's like, "Oh, I guess you have to come in." And like, doesn't does she like unclaps her bra, or am I just imagining she does that? I don't remember, but probably I don't remember. something like that. Um, something to make it obvious that they're about to fuck. <laughs> yeah, but Kev walks right in, and they get down and dirty, and you don't see anything. It just cuts um anyways to more wholesome news um mickey comes out of the boys room and asks fiona to keep it down with the boxes in the attic because ian's sleeping he like closes the door so peacefully too he's like ian's sleeping like meds (laughs) meds knocked him out he (laughs) has been out literally all day um fiona's like fiona's like real (laughs) (laughs) so true um he offers to try to help more around the house which is so sweet um and fiona goes do you know how to use an iron and he goes yeah I mean, as a weapon. So good. So good. Um, and Amanda's comment, they could have been besties. Like, my kingdom for this scene has been, uh, ha- seen to f- have followed them down to the kitchen having a conversation taking care of Ian. They could have just been chatting up a bit. Like, are you I joking? I have no clue what she was trying to say there. <laughs> my kingdom. <laughs> I know, my kingdom. I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> I know, that's why I yeah. stuttered trying to read that. I was like, that makes sense in Amanda. I guess but yeah no for real like they were friends there's so many like i feel like i'll say it they never showed us they were so buddies like their conversations were so just like even though like you really never we didn't get that much fiona and mickey they had really good chemistry of just being able to like because i i both of them they were were, incredibly similar they were they were incredibly similar they were like the most firecracky, craziest people. But then the moment you put them in a room, they just are so at peace together. And it was crazy because whenever they were in a room together, you could just 
I don't know, you could feel it. Like, especially like when they're visiting Ian at the hospital and especially with this scene. And then I think there's like another scene later on in the season when they're like, there is, um, them, they're in the car when together. In prison, yeah. Um, fucking spoiler. <laughs> oh, like, it's just like, I don't know, like something about them. And like, obviously Amanda feels the same way. And I know you feel the same way. Just, I wish they had more screen time together because god damn i they they were the best it does suck because then in season six or seven when he returns fiona's like a hater because <laughs> she's, she's such she's a like, major no, like, bitch and like even- like but it but i also get it because it's like she's only heard the story from ian. the perspective of ian when he didn't want mickey yeah. or you know she knows like how much ian was struggling and she like equates that to him like being with mickey but then i'm assuming like off screen you know she came around yeah but it's just like i i think it's because they are so similar they are the exact same person except fiona prides herself on thinking she's like a pretty good person and mickey prides himself on thinking he's like the baddest like bitch guy. alive like a like a criminal yeah like a thug but they're like, both like so- broken softies yeah and also fiona is like you know mickey's a better person than he thinks and fiona's a worse person than she thinks so yeah. it's like they meet right in the middle yep. uh god makes my skin boil god also like not gonna lie like two of the top actors on the show oh, when you put them in a room together absolutely they can happens. they do more with their eyes than they do like i don't know like ah, like the okay. two of them the two of them and jeremy it would have gone off dude i they, they they knew they could never put them in a room i together had to like cro- that. i had to cross <laughs> my legs in scenes like those god all right anyways but instead of getting a sweet moment of uh mickey and fiona walking talking about ian no we instead are back with frank and bianca getting stoned at the lake um she is saying that she's gonna refuse treatment for her cancer and even throws her phone at the lake because everyone is blowing up her phone yeah like trying to like be like you need to get treatment you should try to live and she's like no i don't want to like she works in a hospital she knows what chemo does to people she does not want to go through treatment which is like honestly fucking respect i would not know what i would do in that situation and it's yeah. not even like stage one it's stage three it's stage three and it's so pancreatic. her chemo won't just be like any old chemo it's going to be the most intense even any chemo is intense but it's going to be like probably the most intense form of chemo too well um, yeah i mean other than like stage four i guess but well they don't really treat Stage yeah, four stage like four. You're basically, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, um, she asks if he believes in God, and she, and he ends up saying that he believes in a force much bigger than himself, which is like respect, respect. Um, he said that there's uh nothing peaceful about dying or almost dying in his case. Um, all and of the then, times he's died has been like super violent. Up, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like violent deaths. Um, and then obviously I've been referring to her as Bianca, but then we learn her name is Bianca and then she goes, do you want a streak? And of course, Frank is up for it. Um, and they immediately strip down butt naked and she gets a head start and they're streaking down by the lake. And isn't it cold right now? It's cold as hell. They're both, they're both in coats and stuff. It's cold as hell. But at least I guess that's why they're streaking and not skinny dipping. (laughs) True. Um, Lip, also naked, coming out from a shower, crosses paths. Hey, hey what a good segue. Um, crosses paths with Kev, who is very, very tired from fucking 20 year olds all night. God, what a hard hey. life. Um, <laughs> Lip asks about V, and Kev says that they're doing their own thing now, I guess. Kev asks about Amanda, and Lip says, yeah, they're still fucking, but he did end up going down on his hot compressor. And Lip's like, ooh! I mean, Kev's like, ooh, shit! Um, Back with Carl, Fiona sees the damage that Sammy did to his face, which is like a gnarly black eye um, and like a split lip or something like that. Um, and then she gives him some good kid clothes to wear to his hearing, which is like a pair of glasses. I think I think Sammy's fucked up too when we yeah, see no. her. I think her face is fucked up too. Yeah, no, she <laughs> definitely is. They Fiona gives him like a little like polo, some khakis, and like um like some like glasses or something. And he like grabs like her like compact or something like that. And he's like, ah, oh. or like he grabs like her phone. And he's like. I look like a bitch. I look like a, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh my god, remember when he shaved his head and he, I look like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, back with Frank and Bianca. They're still by the water, and she just... I think he's, like, sitting down on the bench, and then it cuts to her just, like, screaming at God about it all. Um, and then she just, like, abruptly stops and says there's something else she needs to do, and just starts walking, and Frank just, like, scurries and tries to follow behind her. In court, Chucky also has some bruising. Uh, oh, I think that's meant to be... No, oh, word, no, no, word sorry, got sorry. out that he was a rat. Sorry, I, I thought that meant to say Sammy, but I'll restart. Um, in court... Uh, Chucky also has some bruising. I guess the word got out that he was a rat, so he got jumped in, like, the juvie holding. Um, Lip, Fiona, Ian, and V, and probably Liam, uh, sit down for the hearing, uh, behind in the pews, and Lip has time to ask if V and Kev separation is temporary, and she just, like, kind of gives him a look and doesn't have an answer for him. Um, and then... Debbie and Liam are also there. Uh, Mickey is noticeably absent, but he's... <laughs> Amanda says he's probably allergic to courtrooms right now. He probably didn't want to go to court. I don't blame him. No, yeah, he was like, mm, I'm, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he's he's got other stuff to sort out, probably. Yeah. Uh, Chucky's lawyer ends up using the defense that he is barely a function functional intelligence, and Chucky proves it. Um, do you know what he does to prove it i forget he's just dumb i i don't yeah i don't oh remember. i think isn't he like on his phone and they are like right chucky and he goes yeah or something <laughs> so I, think, I don't know something like that he's an ipad kid no because he baby. can't he can't be like he's an ipad baby but he can't be like on his phone or anything in court i don't know something something really dumb yeah but it is so interesting to me that carl gets out of juby before chucky does I get, and it's like what for fucking good behavior too or something. I something like that, but he gets out like a while before Chucky does. Yeah, no, you're right. Like half the season. <laughs> uh, Stan, uh, Sammy stands up and gives a speech blaming Carl and the Gallagher's for all of their negligent negligence. Uh, but Chucky still gets a hundred and twenty days in juvie and or sixty days with good behavior, which is like. Not that bad. Like, that's a minimal sentence for, like, Four how months. hard of an offense that could have been. Yeah, um, we got us. I, I'm so curious what the time jump is between seasons five and six now, because we still have this whole, like, other couple episodes to go, which I think just take place, like, in the span of a couple days or, like, yeah. a couple weeks. But that's only, like, four months. Yeah. So... I don't know. Because does, do we not see, I like totally forget, but like, do we not see Chucky until next season? No, we don't see him till he gets out. Because I remember, well, I, they both go and then we don't, we don't see either of them until they get out. Yeah. And the beginning Carl gets of out like in the first episode. Yeah. Carl gets out in 601, but Chucky, I feel like doesn't get out until like 604. Yeah. Because I, I remember like Queenie, a... Queenie comes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Queenie, yes. my best friend Queenie. I loved fucking Queenie. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, when it's Carl's turn, his lawyer gets up and says, my client knows he has made a mistake. He has learned from what he's done and he has learned from the experiences. Also, I'd like to make a fun comment. That lawyer was from Ned's Declassified. <laughs> Who is he? I forget his name. He played one of like the one of the teachers. Oh, okay. Probably, I, like, the evil science teachers. <laughs> honestly, like, I cannot remember for the life of me, but, like, I just remember him so vividly from just being a teacher and from Nancy Classified. Um, but, obviously, his liar is full of shit. His lawyer is full of shit because Carl does not feel any of those things. Um, and then there is a very noticeable focus on Ian during those words, which is, like, why are you doing that? Shut, shh, shh, guys, we don't need to talk about that yet. Um... The judge asks Carl if he's sorry, and he says he's only sorry for trusting someone like Chucky with a man's job. And the judge says, basically, shut up or I'll put you in jerky. Because Char- Carl's just, like, talking it up now. Um, he calls her fat and kind of hits on her at the same time. And she, like, bangs her gavel and says, a year in juvenile pres- detention center. I feel prison. like, I don't know. I just remember there's a shot of, like, after he says that shit to her there's a cut to fiona and she's literally like (laughs) she just throws her hands up she's like what the fuck like okay a year it's a good time marker so i guess chucky just gets time added (laughs) Mm -hmm. because he's does bad stuff uh fiona asks him what the fuck he was thinking and he basically said he's gonna thrive in juvie and he goes i'm gonna make juvie my bitch and the family just is like yeah 
the family's just defeated and he just get cu- he gets cuffed and walked away. <laughs> um B- uh, Bianca and Frank are still on their mission. We don't know what it is. Um, Bion- Bianca arrives at a house of a girl who stole her prom date back in high school. She knocks on the door. She opens it and immediately just punches her in the fucking face. Like, right in the nose, yo. She's crazy for that. <laughs> um, and they, she, like, runs away and Frank's just like, ah! And, like, also just, th- it's a lot of her running and Frank scurrying after her. It's very cute. Like, he's very, like, he follows like a lost puppy um back to the gallagher boys uh lip and ian get a moment together to talk about ian working at patsy's and uh lip needing to fix his tuition ian finally admits something's wrong with him but it's fucked up that he'll have to take uh 40 years to feel better uh no that's not true that's not true that's not true that's not true it's okay you're gonna feel better you're gonna be feel better very soon it's just you're gonna have to keep getting treatment so you can continue to feel better yeah <laughs> ah, ian we love you it's okay lip reminisces about the time he tried to protect ian from a bully but ian said i got this and he tells wait hold on what i don't know how to read this sentence i feel crazy there's a lot of i got he tell- so so lips like okay remember that time you were getting bullied and i like offered to like beat up the kid for you but ian's like ian said but he he okay pretend i'm lip talking to ian okay <laughs> and you said you said i got this and then he goes ian you got this like like you could do this basically ah, gotcha i watched this episode like five days ago <laughs> so like the small like one-off conversations i never can remember in my brain can i be so honest with you i did not watch i did not rewatch this one because i've seen it so many times i watched it i was like, like i don't even need it i watched it a couple days ago like after amanda had sent the notes because i knew we were planning at some point this week but like i've been i'm on day six out of eight of working in a row so Something that happened two days ago feels like four weeks ago. No, I get that. I get that. Um, then we cut back to college to Lip at the financial aid office. The financial aid guy tells Lip about his old roommate who was very, very rich now. And I guess they like talked and he donates to the school pretty frequently. And he offered to be paying Lip's tuition this semester. Wasn't it kind of like a pay it forward situation or? Something like that. Yeah, this guy was kicked out of school. But his like frat buddy's parents covered his tuition, so now that he's rich, he's like okay. He's like paying it forward. Um, it's a plus no- like plus like after Lips like moment in the office with. I his, mean, like, honestly, like his monologue. <laughs> yeah, his monologue. But it's like honestly, I am I am one to kind of believe that maybe this guy pulled some strings and like he's lying like, like he's like and maybe oh, just like maybe this- just like waved it like yeah. was just like like oh my buddy donated all this money to cover your tuition wink wink or something like that yeah i mean it could it could just be like that could be the case like like some guy is really is pay is really paying it forward mm-hmm. but it's like i don't know it seems like too much of a lo- of like a lucky serendipitous break yeah. for li- like this guy had to have something to do with it what's up with all these profession professors just like talking about their students la da like you had the fucking press professor call the financial aid about him you have this guy talking to other people about this guy's situation Lip is an open book. Well, I guess book. he said it was it was his old roommate, and so maybe he was like, "Hey, I know you do that like scholarship oh, true, true, type true. thing. Like, do you want to like? I have this kid. It's just really a hot subject, it. a hot topic, I guess. Yeah, he is. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but he says it's a no strings attached interest free loan. It's free money and Lip just can't, uh, can't not believe it. Like he says, all right, I guess I'm going to college. Um, Fiona ends up bringing Ian by the diner, but Sean had left hours ago and hadn't been back yet. Um, and Fiona's coworker shows Ian around, um, around the diner just to get him familiar with the area for the dishwashing job. Um, and Fiona leaves to go look for Sean. Back to Kev at college. Uh, he's at the dorms thinking he's going to another hookup, but there is a room full of dudes there instead. Like, he got, like, a rape walker call, and a bunch of dudes are there when he arrives. Um, <laughs> these little bitch baby men are mad that Kev, one, is getting girls home safe, too. Getting home safe. Two, banging them when they are sober and making sure the woman comes first. Um, and like they make it real. <laughs> I know they like pinpoint everything they're pissed off about. 
um, Kev lets it out on those guys about how hard shit has gotten with his wife, and the guys are like, um, okay, she's hot. What's your problem? Like, why are you here? Like, you have a smoking hot wife. Because he, like, pulls out a photo of her, and they're like, whoa, bro, dude, she's hot. Like, whoa, and it's like, and they're right. Yeah, duh. V is, v is so hot. Yeah. I would And she's smash. a good woman. She's a great woman. She's a great wife. <laughs> um, but then those guys saying, like, so, like, what's your problem? It makes him realize that, like, no matter how many girls he can get with and how many he's gotten with, none of them are V. None of them are Veronica. You know so what, true. though? I'm, I really do think they needed this, like, separation because I think that it would have been very hard for V to connect with the babies. Yeah. Like, had with him still Kev there. not stepped out. Because... Part of it was just that she was so jealous that he had such a great connection with them. Mm -hmm. And then another part of it was like, he's so overbearing and like kind of unwilling to let her like try and fail with them, you know? Yeah, exactly. To let, he's like, he's like unwilling to let her struggle, but struggling is part of the bonding process. So it's just like, I think they, they overall needed Mm -hmm. this like separation. Definitely. Back at jail, Sammy is visiting Chucky, and she's setting him up to give him a prison tat. She, like, pulls out, like, a like a pencil with, like, a needle in it from, like, her, like, sock, and then, like, has, like, a pen or whatever and, like, opens it up and, like, is about to give him, like, legitimately, like, she's a prison. A stick and poke. Yeah, basically, like, a prison a stick and poke. Yeah. Stick and poke. Um, but we don't get to see what, what it is. Ugh. Anyways. We join Lip standing at the door of his professor's house. Um, his house. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We join Lip standing at the door. Of no, his no, 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 no. Yeah, she, he does. He does go to her house. Okay, I was about to say. I was like, I forgot I, he goes there so soon. Um, we join Lip. I don't know how he somehow figures out homegirl's address. That she lived there because <laughs> I think I think there is like yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Because when he, when the husband comes back after they're done and she's oh like, yeah, what the fuck. He's yeah. like omelet. I don't know how he got there. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, honestly, maybe he asked the financial aid. He was like, hey, this professor, like, was worried about me. Like, want to stop by your house and say thank you or something. Gotcha. We never know, though. But so Liv somehow finds the address of his professor's house. So he's there. He knocks on the door and tell her tells her that he's staying at school. And she basically tells him he's – wait, what? It's bad in a bed way. He's bad. He's bad in bed anyway. So like the fact that he's staying oh. in her class is no problem for her. Like she's like she's like, oh, it's fine if we stop fucking because like you're bad in bed anyway. Mm-hmm. Like he and he's he, like he's like, what'd you just say? Yeah, like, he's like, mm, don't say that. He does not like that mm, criticism. Prove it. Um, she invites him in and they start to talk about his tuition and she asks if it if it's hard to believe in uh to believe someone thinks he's. What? Why am I literally stuttering? I'm having a stroke. Um, she invites him in and they talk about his tuition and she asks if it's hard to believe that someone thinks he has a bright future and is wanting to look out for him. And she sh- that she says that he should get used to the world wanting to pick him up because like homeboy has just been served n- nothing his entire life. So he thinks he's less than everything he deserves. But now he's in a it's position like- where he's showing his greatness and like everyone seeing his success and praising him for his success oh yeah he needs to like see that like in himself lip has worked for so much but also a lot has been kind of handed to him yeah. just because he's so like like he he can hold his own in the institutions that he's in for sure but a lot of the time his attitude is what like sets him back because yeah. he will he will purposefully push away opportunities and so because like, he doesn't I feel like think a lot he... has been handed to him in the sense that people give him multiple chances. Like, they're like, oh, I know you're just being a little shit. Like, yeah, because he continues not to believe in himself. And they're like, no, like, you can do it. Like, fucking, here you go. Like, instead of you having to work for it, I'm giving this to you now because I know you don't have the confidence in yourself to actively seek those things out yeah. so we're gonna give them to you because we know you'll do good in them and that's what's gonna like exactly and I like think he just there is like some sort of pride to him in suffering mm-hmm. in, like and i think i think a lot of these characters like there is there is a like pride in them for the circumstances that they've grown up in that they like for a, a while they don't want to have like or they don't want to move upward because they feel like they're gonna lose their um like scrappiness yeah because that's all they've ever and, known. 
and kind of and kind of like lose their respect and ability to connect with people who are like less fortunate than them so they they almost like don't yeah they just they don't kind of want to but also it's like worth mentioning that it is very hard to yeah. move up economically in america yep. but i feel like for for like situations like lip sometimes he kind of gets in his own way with yeah, that definitely he holds himself back so then it's just given to him because he's not gonna do well it and also because i i think like for him like move like l- having to like fight for everything he has is familiar to him Mm -hmm. and he wants to like keep that Mm -hmm. because then he can be like i got to this point versus it was i i just ended up here like i worked to this right plus it's also like if if he were to gain any sort of like stability then i think he's just going to be worried about losing it yeah exactly whereas if he never has it he doesn't know what he's missing. Yeah, there's you no know? reason to worry. Yeah, if you're are oh, if you're always worrying, why you got to worry about other shit? If you're always worrying, it do- like you never notice, you know. Um, but she just says that he should get used to the world wanting to pick him up, and I agree with her. And homegirl's wearing the silkiest, beautiful robe, and she drops it. Love hey. this for him. <laughs> Love this for him. And I think she just I wish like I him so bad right now. <laughs> and then she like. <laughs> Like, just, like, slyly goes up the stairs, and I think he, like, follows after her while, like, stripping his coat and stuff like that. Um, Fiona is outside of Sean's apartment looking for him, uh, and she, I guess she, like, climbs up the fire. I don't know if she breaks into his apartment or ends up just climbing up the fire escape, but she finds him out on the balcony staring into space. Um, He found out that his PO told him that he cannot leave the state to be with his son, and that he hates this so much that he wants to use, but he can't stop thinking about using, and he says if he gets up, he's going to use, so he just hasn't left the place he's been in. Like, he's just so just, but it's like... it's, like, cold as fuck. Yeah, like, he just knows that, like, if he moves a single inch, he's gonna use. Um, but because he's still on parole, he obviously can't move to a completely another state. You have to wait until your parole is over. Um, but she grabs a jacket of his from inside and sits on the balcony next to him. And it's just, like, a nice silence between them because she knows that, like, there's not much she can say because it's already said and done what's going to happen. Um, and obviously, he wants to use, so she's not going to be like, oh my god, let's go inside and make you feel better. She yeah. knows exactly she's what he like, needs I'll right just now. Sit. Well, she's also just like, I'll sit here and make sure that you don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Frank and Bianca are on the bus coming down from their... Two good days, uh, coming down from their two good days of craziness, and she falls asleep on his shoulder. Have they really been out and about for just, like, t- over 24 hours just go- doing shenanigans? I guess. At least, at least a day. A day. Because like, maybe it's the we nighttime. Had, we had nighttime with other people. Okay, so... yeah, maybe that was, like, the beginning of the day, and this is, like, the end of the, end of the, of the next shebang. Day. Yeah. Um... She falls asleep on his shoulder, so he immediately starts to pickpocket her and finds her wallet and just, like, takes, like, all the cash out of it. And it's, like, a lot of cash. It's, like, a lot of cash. I mean, she is a doctor. And she was like, I'm ready to spend fucking money. Mm -hmm. Over to college, Kev comes back to Lip's dorm and, uh... He rejects a call. He gets like a phone call from the Rib Walker phone and he rejects a call from a co ed. He uh, pulls out his phone and uh, stares at the picture of V. Just like he's just like swiping. On just, <laughs> on just his like lock screen, I thought, right? He oh, yeah. Just, I think like, it's just at... like this like boobylicious photo of her on his lock screen. Slay. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I forgot he's alone in Lip's room. I forgot Lip's not there. Um, Lip sits up in his back. So we're at the professor's house. Lip sits up in the professor's bed, staring at the painting she compared him to when her husband comes home. Because you hear like, honey, I'm home. And she's in the shower. He's like, he's like getting dressed. He's like, fuck, fuck. Like (laughs) she's in the shower, I think in another scene when they're fucking or whatever. But so like he's naked and immediately starts to pull on her, his pants on. And she's like, so chill and calm. And he walks in and he's like, lips like dude i'm sorry i'm sorry but the husband comes in and he goes omelet 
<laughs> he's like how you oh, like yeah. your omelet so did he spend the night so lip spent the night no i think it's maybe just like a couple hours later because i think lip went over that night and i think he was just getting home late from like a like a flight or something like that like i think it's still night oh it's not it's not morning okay yeah, I, like, was confused I, I think he just like was. wanted to make himself like a quick dinner and like an omelet is a quick i guess but it's so funny he's just yeah omelet and omelet that's it you want um <laughs> i'm thinking he makes him breakfast like later yeah <laughs> like, that's when he makes like seat. the he makes like the silly comments at them. He's like, "Good morning, honey," and then like says, "Good morning, honey," to his wife next or something like that. It's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> they're like he is so it, silly. It's a cute, silly dynamic, but it, it ends so icky dicky. Um, well, just because of like the college and stuff. But yeah, just obviously we'll, we'll shitty things. And because lip lip has a lot of issues. Lippy cousin problems. Um, back over to Frank. He looked at Bianca's license uh, while he was pickpocketing her and managed to bring her home. Uh, he tucks her in safe in the bed. And then he, like, Honestly, goes into the kitchen. Honestly, that's pretty nice yeah. of him to do, to be fair. Like, he stole all her money, but, like, she's a doctor. No, but like, then he goes and then, like, sleeps on her couch. He, like, gets naked and then, like, goes and lays on her couch and falls asleep. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, he but tucks he's her in like, safe. <laughs> He talks to her and say, but then he just like, yeah, I mean, he just goes to bed on her. Well, because he knows he's not, he's, he's not allowed back at the Gallagher house. Him getting naked is super weird, but it's also like, that is how men be sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> because like, like the next episode, he like makes her breakfast in bed and she's like, why are you still here? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I so think... she's like, she's like, okay, I can get down with it. Okay. Like, um, so he tucks her in safe and then he crashes on the couch and then on to the prison bus, you see Chucky in the very front of the bus get on, uh, and he sits next to a white supremacist, and then you see why. It's because Sammy had tattooed a swastika in the middle of his forehead in between his eyebrows. She's insane uh, for that. So She's other insane kids... For that. What is he going to do for the rest of his life? Like, does, seriously. I know, because, like, obviously, spoilers ahead, like, Fiona just sh- covers it in with Sharpie, like, when he comes back, but, like... She makes it a box. Yeah. <laughs> she, she turns it into a box. But it's, like... Or, like, a window. But it's, like, right in the middle of his forehead. Yeah. Where his third eye would be. Like, Literally. So, other kids... his arm or something. Other kids with white supremacy tattoos and, like, cornrows um, make him sit next to them because now that's his posse. And then Carl gets on the bus and he ends up... he goes to the back of the bus and this guy tells him to sit next to him and it turns out it's one of g-dog's guys and he says that they know that he didn't snitch and that they got his back and they hands him a do-rag and that like carl carl got his gang in the prison too and cut the credits um amanda says that she could not identify the credit song unless you have any ideas i'll find it we'll find it it. give me a second intermission Well, because there's this, there's just this website I use that like has all of them listed. Um, um okay, there's two listed here. <laughs> One is "Cut Loose" by the High Decibels, and then the other is "This Is Me" by Dre Rob. I think, yeah, I don't know what which one it is. Oh, interesting. Final scene. Final scene. There's two songs. There's probably one playing one when is, they're on the bus. One is. One is Get Juiced by the High Decibels, and the other is Cut Loose by the High Decibels. So it's it's one of those two. Nice. Okay. Um, but no credit after scene. Uh, just kind of ends right there. Um, but next time on Shameless, uh, Bianca wakes up and Frank is still in her house. And it seems like he's kind of sweet on her. Like, he's, he's being a sweet little boy. Um... Gus calls Fiona from the road, but blows her off for Skype sex, because homeboy's busy. Uh, the weed Kevin Lip were selling starts to fuck up his residence up, and Sammy is about to do something fucking unforgivable. And end episode. Amazing. Wow. What Wowza. An episode. The next one is crazy. No, insane in the membrane. We get... One of the, the best next three, songs. Insane in the membrane, insane in the membrane. We get one of the best songs. Oh my best god, the songs. acid. Needle drop, needle drop. Coming yeah. up for oh. air. air. <laughs> I listened to you this, I listened to this oh. remix of it. Um, I used to listen to that. I used to listen to that back in the day. You got me. Dude, there, like, there was like 
three shameless songs I always had in rotation that would make me feel crazy. It was Acid, it was Tongues, and Move Like You Stole It. <laughs> oh, for real? I thought you were going to say Sleep Forever. I still nope. listen to that one and, like, cry. Not not even because of, like... You there. Sorry. <laughs> not even because of the scene, but just when I listen to that song, I'm, like, overcome with, like, despair. No, there's this there's this remix of Basic Instinct that I listened to by Thomas Jack. Oh, Basic that's Instinct. That's really good. I don't good. know why I said Acid. My bad. Well, it's by The Acid, but yeah. yeah. The Thomas Jack remix of Basic Instinct. I think you definitely have sent that to me. Yeah. God. Lena, how'd you feel about this episode? I I thought it was pretty good. I I was surprised at how much, like, happened because I think in my brain, I always just thought that this one was, like, just an intermission. Yeah. For, because I was like, I was like, such crazy things happen in episode eight. Such crazy things happen in episode 10. I always, like, in my brain categorized episode nine as just kind of, like, in between mm. but it's all the we, odd episodes i guess we were we were moving we yeah we're moving in here i Moved i don't know like you stole it i oh yes indeed i forget what i was gonna say especially but uh, like directly about the episode but i don't know i feel like oh no debbie no debbie this episode yeah like no debbie storyline which is great because she's got nothing to do the worst thing coming up Anyways, I love this episode. I it doesn't it's it's a filler episode, but it like it gives us details to be able to have more feelings towards everything that's going to happen. Like it's not a main episode you need to watch to understand what happens in the next things, but I think it gives you more details and kind of like makes you feel for certain characters with bigger events that will happen later down the line. Yeah, for sure. Um well, yeah, well I I agree. I don't really have anything else to add, but yeah. um if you want to find us on social, we are at Look We Had Pod on Instagram, Twitter, all the social medias. Um, Amanda, who could not join us this episode but usually hosts with us, is at abnormal at abnormal Amanda eighteen on Instagram, at abnormal Amanda on Twitter, and at abnormal abnormal Amanda underscore eighteen on TikTok. I am Instagram at Kojak, C-O-J-A-C-K-K, and Twitter at Durs Holmvik, like character from Workaholics. And Evan, where can they find you? I'm on Instagram at, I always forget what my username is. I think it's I'm OK4000. Um, I've been hopping on Twitter every now and then. You can see me there. I believe it's still Internet Life, yo. I really need to change that. I really don't like shouting that out. But, hey, you can find us on all the socials. You can find everywhere to stream everything on our website. It's luck we had on every platform you can imagine. Um, you we can pre- email us. Email us. We DM love getting us. emails. We want to talk to you. want to hear your thoughts, your feelings. Um, yeah, and with that being said, I hope you guys all have a wonderful night. Lena, it was wonderful talking to you. I know it's super late because she is still in England as we speak. Uh, she's in the future. In the <laughs> like it's it's 8.30 p.m. for me. But we'll let Lena go to bed, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.